So this evening we've got the amazing Kurang Bin with us. Hello. So thank you in advance for joining us tonight. Um, so to introduce the band, we've got Mark Spear on guitar here. Uh, we have Laura Lee on the bass. And Donald DJ Johnson on the drums. So you guys have just played the, the beach stage, right? Yeah. How was that? It was great. Yeah? I loved it. Amazing. It's, it's a nice vibe down there, isn't it? With Such the a good vibe. It's really nice to watch the um, crowd fill up as well. It's like yeah. the best feeling. Amazing. That's wicked. Cool. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, it'd be really cool to, to you know get to know you guys and, and get to know how, how you make your music um, and how long you've been making it. So where, where, where did the journey start, I suppose? The beginning of the journey. All right, well, um, so I've known DJ since we played at church in Houston, Texas on about 12 years now. Okay. Um, I came in playing guitar in a worship band wow. in a little, little church in Houston, Texas called St. John's. And most people probably haven't heard of it, but that is where uh, a lot of folks who are from Houston musician-wise come out. Uh, it's technically Beyonce's church. <laughs> uh, I personally have not seen Beyonce at church. She's, you know, she got a lot of work to do. She's a bit busy. However, I definitely saw uh, Kelly Williams, no, Kelly Rowland, and Michelle Williams and Solange there in wow. multiple times. That's so. a very, very musical church right there. Yeah, absolutely. And so, so what sort of sounds were coming out of that church? I mean, a lot of gospel. Yeah, a lot of gospel, a lot of gospel music. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but that's how we started. Um, me and Deej would go and uh, have burgers and some drinks and some laughs after uh, after rehearsal. And then before you knew it, I um, I met Mark through friends uh, on a lunch break from work. Okay. Uh, went to a friend's house for lunch. And Mark was there, who lived with a friend of mine named Lucas. And Mark was watching a documentary on Afghani music. Oh, At the time, I was studying art history from that part of the world. Um, so I saw him watching it and was like, who is this guy? I <laughs> uh, started talking to him about it, uh, exchanged numbers, and I got a text from him randomly one day. I hadn't heard from him in ages. Got a text that just said, the universe smiles upon you. And I knew exactly who it was from. Um, nice. So I started crashing there Tuesday night. So they would meet and have burgers after their church rehearsal every Tuesday. And I started crashing it. And we would just talk about music. And basically because of these regular Tuesday nights, the three of us became really, really close. Amazing. Um, yeah. And I started playing bass around that time. Okay. How, uh, long, how long ago was that then in terms of years? 2010. Okay. Okay. Um, started playing bass and I was teaching at school I was teaching maths and uh, although I loved teaching I, I hated my job um, and Mark was going on tour opening up for Bonobo um, with a band called Yippa and they needed a new bass player um, I just started playing so my confidence was not very high but mm. Mark uh, insisted that I was good enough yeah. to be the bass player for this band. Amazing. Try it out. I got it. And I quit my teaching job and went rock and roll and decided to yeah. go on tour. Amazing. Um, and when we came off the road, I, I just went to Mark and I was like, I want to start a band and do this forever. Um, so we started a band and the natural third to come on board was DJ because we'd been talking about music for years. Amazing. So, so Mark was sort of got you involved, but then you were maybe like the spearhead head of of the band, maybe at that point because you got some inspiration. I it. think I'm the spearhead of the band. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So you know, you just mentioned like gospel and Afghani music, and in, in, you know, in the same conversation. Then, is you know, is your sound inspired by those two genres, or specifically, or yeah? Where do your inspirations lie? Well, around 1999, 2000, I was in a bunch of different bands in Houston, Texas, mm -hmm. and I was kind of getting bored with uh, playing in bands. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really listen to any really, you know, good music. Okay. So What, what like sort of music was being played? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something that is not memorable for me to talk about. Okay. Uh, but what ended up happening, I was like, 
I want to go explore the DJs that I know in Houston, Texas. Uh, DJ Sun was definitely a huge influence for me. Mm-hmm. He's a cat from uh, Suriname that lives in Houston. He's been DJing there for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And I hung out with him for a long, long time. He really pretty much taught me how to dig for records. Right, okay. And what sort of sounds was he, was he into? I mean, this is the guy, you know, he had a radio show every Saturday night in Houston, Texas called uh, Solar Grooves. Okay. And he was the kind of guy that was, you know, I'm gonna pull music from all over the world. If it's funky, it's groovy, it's got a, it's got something going on. I'm gonna do this thing. So, mm-hmm. I was very, very into what he was going on. It, you know, go to his house and it's just wall to wall records, every room. And he's wow. been doing it for like forty, fifty years. Wow. Okay. This is a, this so is a old lot of school. There. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And to learn a lot about music and about just digging. You know, mm-hmm. just, you know, what do you like? And if you like it, you know, what label is it on? Who played on it? Yeah. What else did they do? Yeah, like the process, I suppose, exactly. of finding those yeah, individual yeah. artists who really inspire you. Uh, th- that was a huge influence for me. Um, and just the whole thing, about, you know, why limit yourself to stuff that's in English? I mean, I don't really speak any other languages except for English. You know, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can hear this song. It's like, I don't know what they're saying, but I know what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, through the melody just through how they're saying it, just through the groove, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. that's really what get me on into it and just start digging for for music from other places because what we were hearing at the time was like, same old shit, let's let's go yeah. find some new stuff. Amazing. So so DJ, I mean, how would you describe that sound that, is, that has come from that inspiration? Uh, for me, I think it's, it's kind of just a blend of everything. Um, I have a background in, like I said, I grew up playing gospel and also i have a hip hop background so really into hip hop so i think what what i bring to the band sound i think is more of like that breakbeat approach a tight drums yeah sort of which sound, is you know. which yeah. is exactly what mark you know when we started mark and laura was like that was pretty much what they needed yeah somebody so who wasn't going to be like all over the place and yeah. you know taking it drum solos you can keep the groove right. going yeah. right so it was it was uh I think it was the perfect fit for the type of drummer that I had become. Drums was my first instrument. I started playing when I was like three years old. Wow. And um, three years. And then I stopped. Okay. What age, what age were you when you stopped? I think I stopped around like like you know when I graduated high school I believe like um, around eighteen. Okay. And why why was that? Did you get into something else? Or? Well, I'm from Houston, Texas, and you can like at in any given place you can stop take a penny out of your pocket and throw it and you'll hit a great drummer <laughs> um, so too much competition yeah it was too much too much competition uh, I couldn't really keep up because everybody was like super choppy and like really really good okay. um, I remember I was at church one day and the entire front bench was just drummers lined up waiting to play <laughs> and in that moment I realized like, nah, nah, that nah. Uh, it was time to do something else. So I started playing keyboards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mark and I, the church that we played together at St. John's, yeah. I played organ. So there were less keyboarders around at that point. Is that why yeah, you played yeah. that one out? It's, like it's, it's tough to find a keyboard player. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm a virtuoso keyboard yeah. player, but yeah. no. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I was playing, like I said, the church we were playing at, I was playing the organ. And... Um, when Laura and Mark, I still remember it like it was yesterday. We were at Rudd's. We were sitting at the bar, just like this. Laura was in the middle. Mark was there. <laughs> the spare head. Um, and uh, they looked over and was like, DJ, will you be in our band? And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I stopped. Like I said, I completely stopped playing drums. I was like, okay, this could be cool. The way to play yeah. drums again. Yeah. And... Here we are in Croatia. Boom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> yeah, mic drop. So, so moving into like like the process behind your music and how you make it, you know, we touched on, on drums. Is that is that where you start or do you start with uh, guitar riff or? Well, yeah, where do you start? We, we kind of start with drums. Um, Mark's made me a, a bank of drum loops. They're all, they're all pretty much hip hop drum loops. Nice. Breaks. And where, uh. where do you, d- is that, do you get those samples from records or yeah, and get, um, uh, you know, there's any number of uh, 
CDs out there with plenty of drum breaks on it. Yeah. You know, it's just a good place to start. Okay, and, and then where, uh, when where do you move those over? Do you use software in this instance? Because you yeah. guys are obviously like well maybe you could call you know an old school band in the sense that you're all you know musicians and play right. instruments whereas nowadays things are moving a bit more digital in certain sounds well the the technology uh helps us out a whole lot like i mean i i came up and i learned how to use you know daws like pro tools and ableton and you know fruity loops and uh what was it acid is the one i used when mm. i first started nice. um but like just starting with a drum groove just start with a break and then we just build off of that so the the break will determine what the feel is and then she plays bass and then i'll just kind of overlay some guitar on it mm -hmm. edit it cut it up and make it happen and what what do you use do you use the software for that is it we i mean we use ableton yeah. to record um i think because i'm the demos on that. we record our demos on it yeah okay um because i'm the very like i'm the least experienced player out of everyone, I sort of start the songs, even though I have got a drum loop behind me. So he's made this bank of drum loops, yeah. and I'll just pick one, and I'll put it in Ableton, put it just on a loop, yeah. um, and I'll be on my own um, because I get quite nervous playing sort of freestyling in front of people. But if I'm in a room on my own, I'll just mm. play along to it. And I think because I'm the least experienced and because I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I do, but I don't. Uh, is I s I'm sort of the most playful, I think. I'm the sort of white. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the. I'm the white belt of the band. Yeah. So is, is Ableton good in that instance? Is it quite a playful sort of software where you can, yeah. when beginners can just jump in there? I mean, I don't know how to use it other than I know how to put the drum loop to keep playing, and I know yeah. how to record myself on it. Yeah, and get the ticker going. The exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'll just record myself playing on it, and I send it to Mark, and he kind of finds my best bits chops them up and then plays on top of them and then nice. we take that to DJ and we're like make uh, this okay. you know S do the thing <laughs> so there is a process behind there then yeah yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean it's it's that that is our process yeah it seems to be it seems to be working anyway it sounds sounds <laughs> good um, but yeah in terms of you know where you make your music you know you mentioned a couple of places there but you know is there anywhere in particular that I, you know, ideally, if you could be somewhere, like maybe is it a studio or is it a place or something like that? Like, what surroundings do you enjoy making music in? Barns. Bars. Barns. Barns. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, so is that the, the free barn. space idea? Like the you know? barn. Uh, yeah. So, Mark's family owns a property in Burton, Texas. Okay. Uh, there's a barn there, and we basically have our engineer Steve Christensen back in Houston, Texas. Okay. He brings out his mobile recording unit out to the barn. Wow. Mic everything up and we play. And why and why is it specifically that that you like that space? I mean, it's it's incredible. Um I think it's it's rare probably to have um such a unique space like that, but it's a barn in the middle of the hill country. I mean, you can't see anything else except for hills and cows. Um, and the way that the barn is set up, you can open up as few or as many doors to the sort of open hills as you want. And I think playing playing to cows, playing to space mm. uh, greatly influences our sound. And it's a very sort of, for lack of a better word, spiritual yeah. environment. So you take out maybe a lot of distractions which enter your day-to-day -day lives? or No distractions. There is no Wi-Fi out there. There's nice. hardly any phone reception. It sounds beautiful. It's <laughs> it's glorious. <laughs> um, and you know, we when we first started jamming, I I would play drums badly. Right. You okay. Know? So things. Are and then around. she would play bass, and then we just kind of record that, cut it up, just like we do now with the drum breaks. Because mm -hmm. essentially, I was just trying to break. I was just trying to play drum breaks, and then cut it up, and I'll play guitar over it, and then you got a you got a song. And that's it. But the technology is a huge part of what we do. Even though we don't actually do it on stage, we use it in what we what we build. Mm. You know, because yeah. it's, it's it's limitless what you can do. So we try to give ourselves some some limitations. Yeah. Limitations can be very very good for what you build, mm. because it gives you rules and uh, uh, you know limitations to build from. Yeah. It's like I'm only going to use this one scale. Yeah. I'm only going to use this one guitar tone. 
you know, we only use this one feel and you build from that. Yeah, amazing. Have you thought about incorporating some of that technology onto your into your live performances well, or it, I don't want to have to start bringing laptops on stage, <laughs> man. I don't want to start having to use like a loop pedal cuz yeah. you know, like it's w we try to build songs like we we should be able to play with just three people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh on the initial record like there's a lot of um percussion and stuff like that, but if it's not there, yeah. if you're at the show and the percussion is not there, you're not missing it. The yeah. song's there. You know, it's just sure. a, it's just melody, bass, drums, and it's it's all there. For sure. Um, so I don't want to depend depend too much on like extra shit. Mm, yeah, yeah, totally. Simplicity can be, you know, exactly. the best way to, exactly. to do exactly for sure. Indeed. Uh, just to add to that, um, so adding, I think adding like any electronic elements to what we do, it wouldn't sound like the recordings because even in the recording process. We don't record anything with click tracks or right. anything like that, so ah, okay. it's all just just and us in a barn. And yeah, yeah, and yeah. One, two, three, go, and we <laughs> take it. Because uh, I remember when we recorded, I believe not the not the first the the first EP, uh, History of Flight. So I asked Mark, I was like, so yeah, what are we using for a click track? <laughs> He's like, nah, dude, we're not yeah. gonna, yeah. we're not we're not using the click track. I was like, we're not using the click track. Are yeah. you sure? <laughs> so you were still. I was like, really experimenting at that point when you made that first EP I then, yeah? I was surprised that he trusted me right. not to speed up and slow down. Right. I mean, <laughs> I've gotten better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, naturally that happens in, in records, you know. Yeah. All the records that we love speed up and slow down. Some of them yeah. Yeah, of what's, Man, what's the one record, the Osley Brothers record that I always oh. reference? So, what's, um, it, what's it called? Oh, Can man. So, uh, Living for the Love of You. Right. If okay. you listen to that track, listen, it starts off... Skip to the end. It's like ah, uh, okay. It's great. And do you think do you think that was intentional? Is that just a drummer it getting happened. excited? It just It just happened yeah. naturally. Um, and you know, some of our favorite records are like that. So, but yeah, we don't we don't use like click tracks yeah. in the bar. I was gonna say studio, but it's not. We don't use a studio. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's our studio. But yeah, no yeah. clicks or anything. So. Yeah, the electronic thing, yeah. like, why would you do it? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, obviously, when you're not in the studio or the barn, sorry, you're away touring and playing shows, you know, all over the world now. So, um, how have you found that? Um, and is it something that you do when you're touring? Do you, you know, do you make music when you tour? Or do you save it just, just for the barn at home? Or do you get ideas and inspirations from... from I God, I... I remember when we first started touring, I thought, oh, we'll be able to make music all the time. Um, it just, I mean, you just can't. Uh, it's a grind on tour, especially when you're doing like proper tour, venue to venue, you know, you're, you, you arrive in the city, you set up, you sound check, you have dinner, you play, you break down, <laughs> you drive, you do it all over again. Yeah. Um, so it could be a bit of a struggle, right? Like yeah. mentally, physically, or just yeah, it is a struggle. It's an amazing struggle. I think we've, you know, we we became such good friends on those Tuesday nights, and and we sort of fell in love with each other in that way. But mm. we've really become a family on tour, and I think that's the thing that's really changed more than anything is mm -hmm. you learn each other's differences and you appreciate each other's differences, and I think that's almost the inspiration in a way. Um, yeah. And we always listen to music because like we're in we're driving, so somebody's uh, somebody's DJing. Nice. Um, so I think that's that serves as inspiration. And then I think now when we go to record or we go to write a song together, we're we're so much more locked into each other because of the road rather than actually writing on the road. But when we actually come together to record, it's sort of like we've gone through this struggle yeah. of tour, which is brilliant. So it's, a it it's a journey, I suppose. Yeah, In the exactly. same way as it's a journey that you make the tune, the, you know, the inspiration is a journey itself, maybe, from that. Yeah, of course. But yeah, we, we recorded Dece in December. And I think when we got there, because it was our first proper year of touring, it was like, I don't know, when we got back to the barn, it had been so long since we got back home. Mm -hmm. And it was just sort of like we're home, and it felt really beautiful to sort of write together in that way. Amazing. No, d don't kid yourself. That <laughs> barn is cold. <laughs> you know, it is not insulated. 
the the wind just goes right through it, and we yeah. recorded it in December. Yeah. Uh, and you know, in Texas, December is not really that cold, but somehow we managed to pick the week when it was just like, you know, thirty degrees. So we got like heaters and stuff. Thirty degrees and oh, oh I was sorry, gonna no, say Fahrenheit. thirty degrees sounds bad. No, thirty yeah. degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> which is freezing. Right. Okay. <laughs> got you. <ya. laughs> so. You know, so we get out there and we put the mics up, and then we, you know, uh, we 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 usually come to the recording session with some some bare bones like arrangements, like it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that, and just kind of build it through that in that moment when it's really really cold. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and there's some of those be some bees, some bees happening, a lot of bees at the barn. Nice. The What's wildlife, that? you know, you can't you can't really stop that. You Amazing. Know. We actually had. Um, so we've always played to cows, and they're they're brilliant. Cows are amazing. Um, why why are they so amazing? Do they just love all your music? They do. <laughs> they genuinely do. It's sort of like you kind of you write them yeah. off as sort of being sort of daft animals, um, yeah. but they're not. They they really they'll huddle together and they'll kind of come in front of the barn and Whoa, really? sit and listen to us play. It's amazing. Damn. But I remember one recording that actually came into the barn and it was like what. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Don't step on anything. But yeah, it's, it's super special. Okay, so the barn is like essentially a, a club for cows, right? Where they come and just jam with you guys. <laughs> yeah. The so barn is definitely the, the fourth member of the band, yeah. for sure. Amazing. And the cows are our biggest fans. <laughs> fan club, Krungbin fan club. Number one. <laughs> Amazing. So going back to, uh, to, wh- to when you guys are on the road and stuff like that, is that. Is there a top tip that you would give other aspiring musicians who are uh, who are looking to sort of like you know make a career out of out of music, but don't quite anticipate what's going to happen on on tour on big ones? Um, just a tip that I would give to musicians starting out: don't expect to be rich. Yeah. Um, because you know you just I've always live my life by the fact if you're doing something that you love mm-hmm. you don't I mean money's irrelevant it's just a way to keep count of how good you're doing at whatever you're doing mm-hmm. and some people are really good at the things that they do and they still don't make you know a ton of money mm-hmm. but if that's your goal starting out if you see these big stars and you're like you know I want money yeah um yeah. no no it doesn't come like that yeah you yeah. gotta do it you do it there's a lot of cost yeah there Another pro tip for touring is you got to eat healthy. Yeah. Don't okay. eat fast food on the road. <laughs> Don't do it. Um, what's your favorite? F- what's your favorite healthy food to eat, eat on the road? If we are touring the UK, I get a salad from M&S. Nice, nice, great. That is the salad from M&S on the road. You know. Nice and light, nice and healthy, yeah, yeah. not going to fill you up. You don't want to eat a whole bunch of heavy food before we get on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't want to, like, you don't want to drown the energy. I don't drink beer, okay. you know, uh, on the road usually, maybe yeah. after the show. Yeah. I don't smoke weed yeah. on the road Okay. because uh, I'm just useless if it starts smoking <laughs> weed. Uh, yeah. Tequila is a big part of our uh, our rider yeah. The rider, for those of y'all who never toured before, it's basically what you uh, you submit to the club or venue. It's what they should supply to you in your green room or dressing room. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you got to have some healthy foods, some wasa crackers. Got to have some marmite. You know what I'm saying? Got to have some avocados. <laughs> avocados, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. You're that. not, you're not necessarily that. eating that that night. Mm-hmm. You're going to put that in the bag, ah, and you're going to eat it on the road to the next I venue see. the next day. So you have healthy snacks and stuff on the on the road. You don't yeah. want to stop at like McDonald's no. and start chowing down on some like nasty like all that kind of stuff. You got you got to stay healthy. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing I've learned um, from the road is that in the in the performance sense is um, that actually every mistake you make can actually be the best moment of the show. Um, wow, okay. Have you got an example of that? Yeah, I mean, it happened quite regularly when we first started <laughs> that I would forget to plug my bass in. <laughs> um, and I, in fact, one time, not only did I not plug it in, but I didn't even have my cord. So I walked up and and had my bass on, you know, first song starting, 
they were both playing and I went to play and just nothing came out. And not only did nothing come out, but I didn't have anything to plug in to make a noise. Oh man. Um, what was the sound technician like? Uh, did you not do the sound check? I mean, we did a, we did a sound check, but then you know you do the sound check. The yeah. opener goes on, uh, and right. you come on. And I just I left I left the cable backstage. I had to run off and grab it. Poor Mark was left to sort of tell jokes while it was. <laughs> but but I remember you know when it would first happen, and and I'd play the wrong note, or I'd forget to plug in, or something, and I'd get really choked up and sort of be like, oh God, you know everybody noticed. But actually, if you if you laugh. And if it's this sort of, you make a moment of it, it actually becomes the most memorable part of the show, yeah, not only for yeah. you, but for the audience. And it's, it's sort of like, oh, that, you know, that time she didn't plug in, yeah. it was great, and it broke the ice, and whatever. Yeah, you just so got to style it out. Style it out. I think yeah. that's, that's the thing. Got to try learned. anyway. Yeah. Cool. Um, so what's coming up in the future for you guys next, where you are? Um, are you, you're playing a festival in, in, in Amsterdam tomorrow? Right? Yeah, we we travel tomorrow. We play the following day. I can't remember what day. So we play Saturday. Today's okay. Thursday. Yeah. Um, we're playing that, and we've got a couple weeks off, and we're going on the road with a Mexican psych band called Chicano Batman. Um, we're playing with them for about two months. We got a couple breaks, but it's wow. basically for two months in the states. Um, and then we've got a couple festivals in India in December. I mean, India and Thailand and Asia. Wow. Um, and we put out our new record in the new year, and then we'll be touring that everywhere. Sweet. And what's, what sort of sound is that? Is that a sound of a previous music that you've been making, or? Well, <laughs> I mean, there's influences, of course, like what, what our blueprint, uh, so to speak, of, yeah. of what we make. There's kind of a clear formula. You got the, you know, the groovy drums, the dubby bass, melodic kind of guitar. Yeah. So as long as it follows that formula, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So the first record was heavily influenced by Thai music because that's what we were listening to when we first started doing that stuff. Wow. Okay. Uh, but being on the road and listening to all kinds of different stuff, it's like, oh man, I, I'll get obsessed with uh, uh, different genres of stuff in different parts of the world. So yeah. like a couple months ago, I, I couldn't stop listening to Zouk music. Okay. So like French Antilles, like Kassav, kind of stuff like that. So I, you know. I just get do a little. This is where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, it, and la last year we were on the road, and, we were, and I had made this uh, playlist, like this Middle East kind of funk and soul playlist. So it was stuff from Turkey, Iran, uh, Israel, uh, Yemen, Lebanon, all these kind of different places. Nice. It's like this is this is some groovy stuff. This is very krungbin, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So the new record is very much influenced by what's happened in the Middle East and you know the 70s and 80s before before the revolution started to happen before music got shut down yeah. because if you go back and you listen to some music from back then you watch some videos from movies from back then like it's groovy people are having a good time people getting foggy you know people dancing mm -hmm. w women and men together yeah you yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and at this point that that's unheard of you don't you don't see that in yeah. those parts of the world so what we're trying to do is we're trying to show like we've all been funky at one point Nice. We can be funky again. Nice. That's, That's my goal. Like, you know, yeah. you go anywhere across the world, you can find funky music from everywhere. Yeah. Everybody was funky at one time. Yeah. Let's get funky again. <laughs> you know. Nice. Sick, sick, sick. Um, and when you're, when you're finding this music, wh where is it that you're finding it? I mean, are you in the record stores in these places or are you on, I mean, what's Spotify saying? Like, I mean, I'll that's tell you really what, broad. I'll tell you what. Spotify is a golden opportunity for artists yeah. if you sit in here trying to think you're going to make money off spotify you're in the wrong business <laughs> spotify is for discovery yeah 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 of course and if someone finds your music on spotify and they love it they're gonna buy it yeah, yeah. if you're trying to see like oh i got so many streams on spotify i should be seeing this this check yeah and they're gonna see you about. perform as well from yeah that, they're gonna come you know? see you perform they're gonna buy some merch yeah make some t-shirts some stickers you know yeah. all the kind of good stuff uh, but Spotify is a great place to find all kinds of music. There's, there's tons of music from all over the world. Really, really funky, good stuff that maybe I like have like you know one play, mm, you yeah. know, yeah, you contribute yeah. to those plays. Well, I'll definitely be getting those playlists off you after this. Yeah, I am. Um, so Mark's Mark's kind of the crate digger for Krungbin, um, and he makes playlists that we listen to on on the road probably more than either DJ and I. Um, 
and uh, over over December I went away on a holiday and I talked to Mark every day. I mean, it's a constant conversation. And there were these two weeks where he just fell off. And I texted him. I just wouldn't hear from him. And I was like, what is happening? I and I, I was I was a little bit worried about him at one point. And I was like, oh, he's probably just in some sort of like weird music nerd hole. Um, and I finally got a hold of him. And I was like, so Mark, where you been? He was like, I've just been on the hunt for Chinese funk. <laughs> and he yes. spent two weeks just digging in Chinese funk. And he's like, I couldn't find it. But I realize it's because everything's written in Mandarin and I don't speak or write Mandarin. So he had to go find someone that spoke Mandarin right. and could type into Spotify yeah. the names of funk musicians in Mandarin. And then he ended up finding, and when you know. What was this line. era? When was this Chinese funk made? Like, is it like, you know, 70s, 70s and yeah. 80s, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was funky right there in the 70s and 80s. Like, right there from like 1971 to about 1983. Yeah. Everybody's funky. Yeah. Uh, so we found a lot of stuff from uh, China, Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, I mean, if if you want to talk about some of that, I can go in. <laughs> well, we haven't got all night, but we should definitely, <laughs> definitely have a conversation about this. C- can I make it short? I can make it short. Yeah, you can shoot. All right. Uh, there's a band called The Shadows that was from England, uh, okay. one of the first bands to tour the the entire world. And as they toured the world, they would stop in Southeast Asia, Africa, Middle East, South America, North America, whatever. And everywhere they stopped, like, they would influence the infl- the musicians that were there. So they would take this classic combo, drums, bass, guitar, whatever, and mix it with their own local thing. So there's a group called The Stylers that okay. pretty much ran the 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 session band in uh, in Asia. And they, were, uh, they did Malaysian music, uh, Singapore music, and they went and did a competition in the UK, like a, like a Shadows, like... How well can you sound like the shadows? Okay, yeah, yeah. And they got yeah, like yeah. second runner up. Wow. And they ended up getting a record deal over there in Asia. And they, I mean, if you find a record that says the styler is real small on the bottom, it's going to be killing <laughs> because the stylers are awesome. Cool. The stylers, everyone, yeah. Check out yeah, the stylers. Wicked, wicked. Um, well, yeah, I mean, does anyone have any further questions for Karen? What you got? What you got for me? Real quick. Where did you guys come up with a name? Because I'm going to be honest, I struggled with it for a good few weeks. Uh, Krungbin. Uh, so it means airplane in Thai. Uh, we were listening to... What did you say? No, none of us can speak Thai. I, I started taking a Rosetta Stone Thai thing, and uh, Krungbin was one of the first words that you're taught on Rosetta Stone, and I used to love saying it. It's actually pronounced Krungbin. And I would just sort of go around saying Kuang Bin. And we were listening to a lot of Thai music at the time. Um, and we just decided that was going to be the name. We didn't know that anything would happen. Um, I mean, I remember when we started, uh, the guy who designed our, our artwork, uh, I was giving him the brief. And he was like, can I give you one piece of advice? Like, please change your name. <laughs> um, but no, we've stuck with it. But it means airplane. We were listening to Thai music. It was sort of an homage to Thailand. And it also, you know, it's we sort of travel to these places to be influenced, so it sort of makes sense and it's yeah, fitting cool. for who we are. Sick, sick. Cool, thank you. And pe- feel free to ask anything. You don't have to ask like some in-depth music question. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else for a question? Cool. Okay. I'm gonna answer the question before you ask. <laughs> this is not my real hair. <laughs> uh, this is store-bought. I've had this thing for about five years, and uh, it does not smell nice. <laughs> but, you know, when we first started, we were playing in Houston, Texas, and everybody knew who I was. I'd been in the scene for a long time. I had my new Laura Lee. So what we did, we, we came out with a brand new band, brand new look. Nobody knew who we were, uh, and that was the whole thing. Sick, but, of sick, course, at that sick, point, once sick. you started a band, you started the whole thing. Like, you can't really take it off. <laughs> yeah. you got to keep doing the thing. You know, you, the way you start is the way you end. So... I'm still wearing it because it looks good and it's show business. You yeah, know? you're rocking it, man. It's hey, sick. thank you. Thank it's you very sick. much. No problem at all. No problem. <laughs> Wicked. All right. Well, you had a question uh, over here? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, what do you make of uh, any music that you've heard in Croatia, um, like from the locals, and do you see yourself um, incorporating that into your sound? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm always on the lookout for music from everywhere we go, and I was uh, – Last night we were in the uh, van heading over, and really all I heard was just some metal, like some classic 80s metal. 
like some Maiden, what's this, a German band called Accent, and some Turkish metal band that was just slaying, like killing it. And I was like, this is great, turn it up. Uh, I haven't heard any like like really funky, like, you know, Croatian boogie. You know, I like funk, but I also like just like that specific type of funk called boogie. And that's what I'm looking for. Mm. And if anybody's got some like, some, some you know, I, I got to get into the Croatian yeah. vibe. Yeah. You know, there's some Yugoslavian stuff, but that's old. I'm talking about the new stuff. I want to hear the new stuff, you know. What I will say is um, every time we've been in Croatia, I mean, there are predominantly British festivals. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. And, and we always leave with a pocket full of Shazams um, because it, the DJ culture just breeds crate diggers that are are finding stuff that you know we're not finding and so you just find yourself in a in a pool of people that are digging yeah. and and know songs that we would never find ourselves so mm -hmm. i think while we haven't found anything croatian necessarily we always leave finding so much stuff that we yeah. hadn't heard before wicked wicked amazing um so anyone else last question maybe yeah cheers hi guys um so you said in the barn there's no Wi-Fi or anything like that, which can have its positives. Um, but in terms of elevating you as a band, obviously people use social media nowadays and stuff like this. Do you feel, feel like in the barn it's hindered you at all for sort of promoting yourselves or elevating you as a, as a group? I don't think so. Um, um, what we do in the barn is we really try to focus in and hone in on the recording process. And uh, that's pretty much our main focus. Um, usually, I mean, we don't, I don't wear a wig, but we don't record with the wigs either. So um, you probably won't see that footage. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we're really particular particular about, you know, maintaining the image of Krung Band and making sure it looks a certain way. And uh, Mark and Laura do a really fantastic job of curating the look. And we always yeah. try to look cool. Yeah, you do. Yeah, we gotta gotta look cool. This if is it, for sure. If it doesn't sure. look cool, uh, throw it in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm trying to think what to add about it. I think, you know, it's hard. Social media is it's it's its own thing. You know, you're a different person on social media than you are in real life, and yeah. and the wigs are. You know, we're different people as Krungbin and than we are in real life. But I think we found a way to sort of keep our mystery. I think I think it's a social media allows you to be who you want to be on stage in a way versus who you are without the wig on. I can also add to that to answer really answer your question. Yes, it does kind of hinder not having Wi-Fi or good phone signal at the barn. Um, the material that we do, Mark and Laura collaborate on the writing of all the material that goes on. Mm. So this last session when we were doing the last album. Uh, well, the new album that's coming out, um, we got to a point in the recording process, we got kind of stuck. So, I, what do you say, I live a lot, about an hour and a half away from the barn. So I got then we got stuck as a band. We're like, yo, we need to just write. So I went back home, Mark and Laura stayed at the barn for a few days and just sat there and just banged it out. Um, <laughs> just, just wrote. And the plan was like, okay, we're just going to write and we're just going to send this back to DJ so you can hear it. But there's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> so um, I think what ended up happening, Laura stuck her phone up to the speaker, recorded the demo of what they come up with, a song called Maria Tambien, which is first time I heard this song when they sent it back. So I gave it the, the whole treatment. I'm like, okay. They went and wrote. I always listen to music in my car. You know, so I take my phone and I go to the car in the garage. Garage, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> garage, so, garage. Yeah. So I go to the car and, um, all right, I hit play. And the first thing that comes on is this banger. And I'm like, they did it. <laughs> you know, it's incredible. Amazing. But I don't know, it was something about just not having the, a clean, pristine MP3 of the demo of just her holding her phone up to a mini rig. And just recording that, it, I don't know. It was and, and, and on that tip, it was. Um, it took forever to upload. It did, it did take forever to upload. I mean, it took forever to send it. 
And we recorded it in the barn later on with the three of us. And we'd actually recorded a lot of an additional percussion on it. And it was like, oh, man, it just doesn't feel... It doesn't feel like the thing that I sent DJ. Yeah. Um, and we spent so much time on it. And then we went and listened to the actual recording that I sent DJ, which was recorded on my phone from the that speaker day. that day, super lo-fi. And then basically the goal was to sound like the phone you know like that like the no wi-fi <laughs> dirty thing Bur- and that's that's, what, that's what we got brilliant amazing all right well crang ben thank you thank you so so much for joining us thank you all so much for hanging out with us so mark laura and it's been a pleasure